Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, it's Thursday, March 24, 2021. Sorry, 25. <laughs> Why did I put 24 here? Let me correct this later. 25, of course. And it's a big feast. It's the feast of the Annunciation. What happened in the Annunciation? Of course, that's what we're going to read today in today's gospel, right? But uh, without reading the gospel, why don't we review it? Let's see. What do you remember about the Annunciation? What happened there? Chevelle, what is all of that motion? Speak. Come on. What happened there? What happened in the Annunciation? Come on, let's do it fast. What happened to the Annunciation? Okay, I, I, I cannot hear. What is that, Mia? The angel Gabriel came. Okay, so she came to Our Lady. Okay, she came to Mary. The angel Gabriel came to Mary to announce to her that what she, she was going to be the mother of God, right? She was going to be the mother of God. And how old was Our Lady when she had um, that kind of how's that the Annunciation? She was about okay, Chevelle. She was about maybe fourteen, fifteen, right? Around that age, she was a young girl, a young girl to be uh, to be a mother. Well, that, that, during those years, um, that was not uncommon for, uh, for very young uh, girls to be betrothed in marriage. Okay? So Our Lady was about, according to tradition, she was about 14 or 15 years old when the angel Gabriel went to her to announce that she was going to be the mother of God. Okay, so we will read a portion of this, um, the gospel. It's a long gospel. Uh, you know the story, okay? and uh, we're going to hear it at Mass again. Uh, we'll comment on a few parts of this announcement of the angel Gabriel. And what I'd like to comment on today are, are the following words that the angel Gabriel told Our Lady. He said to her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And then a few lines down, the angel says, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. So these words are very, very profound in meaning. And we'll try to... Um, understand it a little bit for today's uh, commentary. So what does, our, what does the angel mean when he said, Hail, full of grace. Full of grace. That statement is, of course, a testament, okay? a proof to Our Lady's Immaculate Conception, to her... Uh, reality that she was exempt from original sin and that she was actually full of grace. Full there means, you know, she had the fullness of it. There was no gaps. There was no, no space to fill in. Okay, As far as grace is concerned, she had all of it that was necessary. Um, um, the way that the state of original justice was as far as mankind was concerned when Adam and Eve were created, right? Before they committed the original sin. The way things were supposed to be according to the plan of God. Mary was 
to be the chosen mother and our Lord, you know, being God, he could do what he wanted to do. And he made this woman to be who is to be his future mother to be free of any stain of sin. And so the angels uh, greeting, see, hello, hail, right? <laughs> it's like uh, uh, giving homage to Our Lady, hail. You who are full of grace, you who are the exception among all mankind, among all women, you who have been so highly favored by God to be created in such a manner that is unlike any other to be free from original sin, see? You are the gratia plena, see? Full of grace. Uh, there's, you are not wanting in anything. You have everything, see? You have everything that not only prepares you to undertake this motherhood that you are about to undertake, but at the same time, you have everything that is pleasing to God. You please God so much, not only because you are full of grace, but because of how faithful you are to God and to all of the graces that he has bestowed on your soul. See? So Our Lady, see, as the angel said, you have found favor with God. In other words, God is pleased with you. God is pleased with Mary. Not only because she's the most beautiful, the most perfect of his creatures, like, like an artist would be pleased with, with a, an artist's creation. Like, you know, oh, that was the best drawing I ever made. Or, wow, this is the best, uh, uh, you know, you, you kids, you make these little figurines of uh, clay, right? It's, it's not that kind of pleasure. Like, oh, oh, you're the best clay figure I ever made, huh? Oh, how good am I to make something so nice, right? Not only because of that. It's not only that the creator was pleased for having created a perfect woman. Our Lord was more pleased, pleased furthermore, because of Our Lady's fidelity to that grace. Okay? Because Our Lady fulfilled very well in a faithful way, what her grace-filled nature was all about. Okay? So in other words, Our Lady lived up to her status of being full of grace. She was very faithful to God. And that is why God was pleased with her. Because don't forget that even while Our Lady, of course, this is conjecture, okay? <laughs> that even if Our Lady was full of grace, okay, she had no stain of original sin. So by that token, well, she's far away from sin. Doesn't mean to say that the devil did not try to tempt her. Because the devil even tried tempting Our Lord. Don't forget that, right? The devil, the devil tempted Our Lord in the desert, right? which we are about to see in a few more days in the Gospels. So even our Lord was not exempt from temptation from the devil. So even, even if Our Lady was exempt from original sin and therefore far from the tendencies of committing sin, doesn't mean to say that she was never tempted. Of course, we have no account of this in the Gospels. It doesn't mean to say that she could have used her freedom in a bad way. And made a choice between God and the devil. Remember, we were talking about this freedom thing yesterday, right? Because Our Lady was free. So it doesn't mean to say that she could not have made a, a different choice. Of course, again, it's remote because of her being in the state of grace. But it doesn't mean it's impossible, right? Okay, Because even the angel, even Lucifer, <laughs> who was already the best of the angels... Well, made a wrong choice, made a wrong choice, exercised his freedom in a bad way. That's why he chose non serviam, I will not serve. And that is why he, you know, uh, uh, was, was disgraced and, and left the court of God. Right? So when we 
the, 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 the right way to understand why God so favored Our Lady was not just because she was the most perfect of His creatures, but it was also, moreover, because of the fact of her fidelity. See? Our Lady was faithful to the graces that she received from God. And that is why she was favored by God. Now, but there's another part of this which I want us to understand. And what is that? The angel said to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary. Do not be afraid. For you have found favor with God. Why did the angel tell Our Lady, Don't be afraid, Mary. Was Our Lady afraid, you think? Was, was, our, was the archangel saying, don't be afraid because Our Lady started getting scared because, oh, there's an appearance of something I don't know here. What is this? Right? A ghost. I don't think so. I don't think the archangel referred to Our Lady's reaction. Okay? Because, I mean... While Our Lady might have registered some surprise and said, Oops, who are you? <laughs> uh, uh, who are you? Right? Why did you just suddenly appear here to me? Uh, you know, Our Lady is used to the supernatural phenomenon of being, uh, 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 you know, in good graces with God. So while she might register some surprise, right? Oops, an angel visits me. I don't think Our Lady was afraid in the sense of what fear brings to a person who is ignorant of truth. Okay? But I think what, I, what the Archangel meant to convey to Our Lady was this. Okay, Mary, you're full of grace. And because you are full of grace and the Lord... God abides in you and the Lord and you find favor with God. Do not be afraid of the future. Do not be afraid of what I'm about to tell you. Okay? Because there's really nothing to fear about what I am about to announce to you. Many times what we are fearful about is not so much what springs in front of us. Right? But rather, many times we are afraid of what we do not know. Okay? That's why there's such a thing as the fear of the unknown. We, are af we might be afraid of what is about to come. What might happen in the future. Okay? Because it's unknown to us. So I think it is more of that that the Archangel was trying to caution Our Lady about. And, and making her aware that, you know... I'm going to tell you something and it's going to unfold little by little in your life. Okay? But there's no need to fear this because you have found favor with God. Because you're full of grace. And what does that kind of an assurance tell us? It tells us, you know, because you have found favor with God, because you are full of grace, God is with you. There is nothing to be afraid of in the future. Everything that's going to happen to you in your life, you can guarantee, is something that God has willed for you. It's something that God has designed for your life. And therefore, while there are many unknowns that will unfold in your life, there is nothing to be afraid of. Okay? I think that's the context that the archangel wanted to make Our Lady understand. And the truth of the matter is, if you examine the life of Our Lady and the, the family, okay, the, 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 uh, the Holy Family, you're going to see that there were so many unknowns, right? So many unknowns, you know. Uh, beginning from the birth of our Lord, you know, uh, uh, Herod was hunting our Lord, and oh, uh, you know, she had to uh, 
they have to flee to Egypt. What's going to happen there? We don't know. You know, how long are they going to stay in Egypt? We don't know. And then they were asked to go back uh, to, to, to Bethlehem, to Nazareth. What's going to happen there? We don't know. What's going to happen to Joseph's carpentry business? We don't know. What's going to happen to... <laughs> Uh, uh, Jesus got lost in the temple. What happened to him? We don't know, right? And then uh, came the crucifixion or be even before that, the ministry of Jesus. He was going around for three years. Where was our lady? Where was Jesus? We don't know, right? There's so many unknowns. Even, even Simon, uh, during the presentation, warned our lady, right? There will be a sword that will pierce your soul. And Our Lady, okay, that's an unknown, right? There's so many things that are unknown. But what kept Our Lady faithful was the assurance of the angel. You're full of grace. You found favor with God. Don't be afraid of the future. There's nothing to be afraid of. Don't be afraid of anything as long as you keep faithful with God as long as you keep being faithful with the graces that are within you that God is pouring into your soul I think this is a very important lesson for all of us to learn from Our Lady Our Lady's fidelity <clears throat> and we can translate this in very practical terms in our everyday lives you know, let's just apply this to this pandemic issue, for example, right? What have you heard me say from the very beginning? Don't be afraid of this pandemic. A lot of people are afraid not of a virus. The truth of the matter is a lot of people are afraid of dying. Okay, A lot of people are afraid of dying because they're not prepared to die because they don't know the state of their soul. They don't know if there is even a sliver of assurance that they might go to heaven. Why? Because they haven't taken good care of their spiritual life because they are not in the state of grace. And so therefore, they're afraid of dying. That's really the ultimate fear that there is here with this so-called pandemic. And, and I think I'm being proven right <laughs> that uh, after one year already of going through this whole thing, we are realizing that while there are people who are dying, yes, we're not denying that. But what is there to be afraid of? I mean, death is going to come to all of us. There's no exemption from that, right? But of course, we have to be prudent. We have to take care of ourselves. But, you know. If we happen to suffer the unfortunate consequence of getting sick and dying from that, as long as we are prepared, our soul is in a state of grace, we are being faithful to that grace that God gives us every time we, we avail of the sacraments and we do good works so we get actual graces, as long as we're faithful to all of that, then there's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear, even if we are confronted by death. There is nothing to fear. Because we are in the state of grace. See, and that is, that's just one very clear indication. People are afraid of doing things because they are uncertain about the state of their soul. They, they're not abiding by the truth. They're not abiding by grace. And all of that is compounding the fear that they, that they encounter when they are afraid. But do you think Our Lady and St. Joseph were afraid? Going through all the things they had to go through. <laughs> Being hunted down by Herod, for example. Jesus was just born. They had to flee you think they were afraid? I don't think so. I mean, of course, there's that natural reaction, right? You want to be protective of your baby. You want to be protective of your life. That's a natural reaction. But I don't think, I don't think that 
it was blown to the extent that, you know, they were fearful of dying. I don't think so. I think that because of the grace in their souls, they were full of confidence in God. They trusted that God is not going to let them down. They were assured of the providence of God. And they were so confident of that. They were so confident of the care and providence that God is giving them because they know the state of their soul. Because they know that they were in the state of grace. Now, this is not self-righteousness. This is not like you just try to convince yourself that, okay, I'm, I don't have mortal sin. I must be very good. I must be safe. from it. No, it's not that, right? It's just with humility, you're understanding your situation. Okay? You're not being scrupulous and you're not being presumptuous either. See? There's, there's a dangerous, ex these are the extremes, right? When you're presumptuous and you, you presume that you're going to heaven because, oh, I have done mortal sin and all that, I'll go to heaven. Or you're being scrupulous and say, oh, what else am I, am I not be? I might not go to heaven because I'm not, you know, I didn't do this well or I didn't do that. Or <laughs> we, 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 virtue is the mean, right? In the middle, not the extremes. So we have to apply some rationality with the way we understand our situation, the state of our soul. And as long as we are abiding by what the church teaches as far as how we should take care of the state of our soul and maintain it in the state of grace, then there's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Let us put our faith forward. Exercise that faith rather than fear. Right? The faith that God is going to take care of us as long as we take care of ourselves too. Right? God helps those who help themselves. So we take care of ourselves by making sure we are in the state of grace. And then after that, put everything to God. And we'll tell God, well, I trust in you. Okay? As we pray in the Divine Mercy Prayer every day, right? I trust in you. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. I do my part, maintaining myself in the state of grace. And the rest, I trust in you. I trust in your providence. I trust in your care. I trust that you are going to take care of me. Therefore, there's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear whether in this life or in the next, nothing to fear. And look at how Our Lady trusts Jesus, trusts what God was going to do for her. How did she respond to the angels? She, she said, Well, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Beautiful words of abandonment that our lady gives us as a good example. Right? Okay, with all the assurance that I am favored by God and thank you for reminding me about my fidelity <laughs> to God, then okay, let it be done to me. I entrust my whole life to, to God. Let God use me as a servant, as a handmaid. I am here to serve God. I am here to offer my life to serve my God. Let it be done to me according to your word. Beautiful, eh? beautiful, beautiful. Example of fidelity of Our Lady, example of humility, understanding her situation, not out of pride, but out of gratitude that God has filled her with grace. And she understands that with humility, right? 
and tells the angel, in gratitude for all of this, I submit myself to God as his handmaid. And I'm going to do what God wants me to do for him in this life. Unafraid. Unafraid of the consequences. And imagine, she didn't know what was coming. Right? She didn't know all about the crucifixion, about the uh, 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 flight into Egypt, about, uh, about all of those things. She didn't know anything about that. Even when Simon wa warned her, your own soul, a sword shall pierce. She didn't know anything about, what, what is this sword? What's this? But did Our Lady show any signs of being afraid? No. No. Because, you see, she trusted in God. She was assured of her state of grace. And she trusted in God. So that is for us also a reminder of how we should react every time we are confronted with things that are a little bit challenging or a little bit uncertain for us. First is to assess where is my standing? What is my standing before God? Am I in the state of grace? Am I confident, at least humanly speaking, am I confident that I am in good standing with God? That I am not in a state of any mortal sin? And if I do, then I go to confession and ask forgiveness sincerely so that I, am, I, I mend my relationship with God and start over. Am I in the state of grace? Am I trying to be faithful to the state of grace in my soul? If so, am I putting my faith in God by trusting Him, by putting my confidence in God that shall remove all and every and any sense of fear that might overcome me. See? If this is our attitude, if this is our attitude, if this is the way we do things, if this is the way we conduct our lives, then fear, fear, is not going to be anywhere near us. Okay? Fear is going to be far away from us. Okay? Okay, that is it for us today. Happy Feast Day, everybody. Let's, uh, let's pray. Uh-oh, somebody is <laughs> saying something in the background. We wish everybody a, a, a happy feast <coughs> of the Annunciation. <clears throat> Let's celebrate this feast, uh, praising Our Lady uh, for her fidelity to the grace of God. And, uh, well, you know, let's come up with one or two resolutions of how we can imitate and emulate Our Lady's example in our lives and also be in God's favor. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good day, everybody, and uh, we hope you enjoy. Bye. Uh -oh. bye, Ava. She's yelling from back in the kitchen. Okay, have a good day. Bye-bye now. Bye.